Who's to say that useless deuce that keeps the truth amazing? Don't trip, won't slip, no whoops or daisies. If you can't fall off, you hallucinate. You wanna talk about people that do it, baby? Tell me a little time I'm used to making. Tell me my jokes, not Gucci, baby. Don't hold it, baby. Jackie, I'm going to be the facilitator for your interview today. Super. Super. You're welcome. I'm going to give you just an orientation. We started in 2003 as a national nonprofit oral history project, and we, like, as you probably know, travel around the country. We want to create a people's history of the United States, um, a place where people can document their own story in their own voice. So we want to keep growing that and building that, and at the end of your interview, you get to decide if you'd like to add to that archive. Are you going to be in here? Yes, I'm, I'm going to be sitting right there. So let's go ahead and get started, I guess. I'm ready. You're a minister, and... I want you to talk a little bit about um, maybe how you experienced your call. My dad was the pastor of a little country Baptist church for uh, 35 years. Whenever he would want to take a Sunday off, it was always my chance to preach. So I served as an associate pastor. I did everything that my daddy did. I followed in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. And it, it really happened very naturally when Daddy said to the congregation, um, you know, I've got to start thinking about retiring. They all said, well, we want Jeannie to be oh our pastor. Yeah. And so the church voted unanimously to call for my ordination. The day that the ordination council was to meet, uh, the pastor of the church that we were going to meet in called my father and said, you're not going to be able to meet here. We've heard some things about your daughter. We decided to have the ordination council at my parents' house. They asked me a lot of questions. Then there was a young man on the ordination council that had just been ordained about six months earlier. He looked at me and he said, I just have to ask this. There have been people saying that you're gay. And there was a moment of panic. But I had already made up my mind that I was going to, any question that was asked, I was going to answer, answer it straightforward. So I leaned across the table and I looked him in the eye and I said, the reason that you've heard those rumors is because they're true. You can choose not to ordain me today, but you can never stop me from doing what God has called me to do. Interestingly enough, he did not vote against me. He, just, he declined to vote. But he did not vote against me. Mm. So you were ordained a Southern Baptist. <laughs> and then what happened? Two weeks later, I got a phone call, and he said, there is a group of people, and they are going to see what they can do to get you taken out as pastor of your church. Mm -hmm. I was just devastated because I had been on this, you know, I'm finally getting to do what God wanted mm -hmm. me to do. And now here's this group of people that never cared about our church before. And so what we decided to do was put a presentation before the church that um, we would vote to become independent because our church was founded in 1791. Before the Southern Baptist Before the Convention. Southern Baptist, before the Georgia Baptist, and before our association. And we got a unanimous vote. And to this day, I have never heard I was, I was so blessed to be able to perform at your service. It was, it was just such a blessing for me and, and for the people. And I think that it says something overall about the spirit of that little church, that we believe that we can make a difference and that we, we're making a difference just by loving people. Family, will you pledge to encourage, support, love, and pray for Doug and Joe on this journey of their comforted love. <laughs> I love being a pastor, I love being a preacher, and I love being a minister. And I'm so glad, I feel like 
um, that I have been called like Esther, which was part of my ordination, that I have been called to Beulah Baptist Church and to our community um, for such a time as this. It's a story that, you know, I really want it to be more about how, how the world is changing than about me. Yeah. But we, we find that out when we tell our own stories. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad to have you.